At Maverick Public Relations, growing your influence is their specialty. NPR works with remarkable companies in the cannabis industry to deliver exceptional results. Experience big agency expertise and outstanding client service delivered by seasoned and knowledgeable experts. Connect with Maverick PR today and move your company to the next level. Visit them today at www.themaverickpr.com. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for coming back. If this is your first time, well, thank you for making your first appearance. Hopefully you're going to enjoy some of the information that we have packed into the next 30 minutes or so. This week, I have a real potpourri of info for you on cannabis. Now, I also can't help but share some exciting news that happened in the world behind the Cannabis Podcast. We'll start with that. Then I'm going to share some details from a fun cannabis-infused party we attended last week. It was a real diversity of people and cannabis experience that was at that party, and it, it brought some interesting dynamics to it. My thanks to Leafly.ca once more. We're going to dig into an article from Leafly. This time, it's an article on the edible regulations from Health Canada. And we'll take a look at those. They seem to be a little bit off of where they should be, perhaps. I'm also going to take a peek at the tiny changes that have occurred in the BC retail market. There is finally now one story that's made it to the Okanagan. We'll let you know where that is. Plus some other details. And we're going to talk a little bit about stigma. As we're finding out in various discussions, the stigma against cannabis in our society, despite legalization on October 17th, that stigma is still strong and it is still there. All of that and more is coming your way on episode 23 of the Cannabis Podcast. Now, the news that I wanted to share with you from behind the scenes involves my other son that I have mentioned only a couple of times on the show. His name is Sean. And I am exceptionally pleased to tell you that my son, Sean, and his wife, Rochelle, gave birth to a beautiful little girl just yesterday. And I am now a grandpa for the first time, a grandpa hosting the Cannabis Podcast. Now, there's a new dimension to Canadian life. A beautiful little girl, Fiona is her name, and we were thrilled to be able to go and see her after her birth yesterday. So congratulations to my son, Sean, and my daughter-in-law, Rochelle on the birth of their first child, Fiona May. I needed to share that information because the fact that I'm a grandfather may now impact some of the things we do on this show. Who knows? But I'm real proud of it and so happy that that has just occurred. Now let's move to other things in regards to cannabis. How about we look at the Health Canada regulations and what they're proposing for edibles as they are becoming legal in 2019? December, no, it's not December. Well, actually, they do say it will be December 2019 before they're going to be available, which I find a little odd. So this is the second wave of legalization, and I'm pulling from an article from leafly.ca. We're going to see three new classes of cannabis products become available to Canadians before the year is out. In December 2018, the Government of Canada launched a 60-day public consultation now, Health Canada has unveiled final regulations governing the legal production and sale of edibles, extracts, and topicals. So edibles are not expected for sale until, as I said, late 2019. Health Canada confirmed that edibles, extracts, and concentrates will likely not be available for sale until mid-December, and only a limited selection of products will appear gradually. That is because of a rule that requires cannabis processors to give Health Canada 60 days notice of intent to sell new products as authorized distributors and retailers require time to stock up and make the new products available for sale. Now, while some products will still hit the store shelves before 2019 wraps up, a slow rollout is expected. And we certainly have already experienced a slow rollout with retail across our country. So don't expect to see too many edibles before the end of the year. Now, if any edibles and concentrates are available before Christmas, consider that to be a positive thing. CBD and cannabidiol-containing products are considered cannabis under the Cannabis Act, but will not be subject to the same limitations as THC. Per the new regulations, only 10 milligrams of THC will be permitted per package of edibles. Now, let me read that to you again, just in case you missed that. 
Only 10 milligrams of THC will be permitted per package of edibles. Now, if you are purchasing any edibles these days, and chances are you are because they're still available on the black market and various other sources, you're probably used to seeing edibles in the 10 milligram range per edible. A limit of 10 milligrams per package. For example, let's say we were talking about a package of, of gummies. Typically, those would be 10 milligrams per, and a package would be 100 milligrams. The Health Canada regulations are stating that that package can only be 10 milligrams, which means that each one of those edibles will be one milligram of THC. Now, that may have an impact on somebody just coming into cannabis, brand new, never had any exposure to cannabis before, might get a little buzz off of one milligram. But certainly for any long-term user, anyone that has developed any kind of a tolerance for THC. One milligram is going to be a blip in the bucket, <laughs> a drip in the bucket. Wow, that's amazing. Now, following this article a little further, the new regulations will also see changes to warning labels on THC products. Claims required to be shown on labels contain statistics, such as that one in 11 people who use cannabis will become addicted I'm still not buying that one either. And up to one in two people who use cannabis daily will become addicted. Now, <laughs> I've seen that label. I've seen that label ever since legalization occurred. And I, I, I can't honestly believe that they put that label out and that people are buying that. Well, the message will not be removed completely. They will be toned down significantly. And boy, do they need to be toned down a little bit. Some warnings continue to be required on labels, but starting on October 17, 2019, numerous claims will be removed. Gone too are the claims that babies born to cannabis-consuming mothers may result in a low birth rate. A statement on the risks of schizophrenia has also been removed. Now, last week, Ben and Jerry's mused about the possibility of releasing CBD ice cream, but Canadians might not get that chance to enjoy such icy delights. The regulations specify that edibles will need to be shelf-stable, which effectively rules out perishable products and means that commercial can of butter and infused ice cream won't be allowed. Big surprise equals no surprises, according to this Leafly article. All in all, the biggest surprise is, well, that there were no surprises. Health Canada released draft regulations in December and, save for some minor changes, many of the proposed regulations stand as they did. The industry had speculated whether the 10 milligram hard cap would be eliminated from edibles, and it survived. Industry groups had wanted Health Canada to remove the requirement that cannabis products be produced in facilities separate from other food facilities, but that too made it into the final version. Now, perhaps the biggest surprise is that Health Canada was able to implement considerations from public consultations, approximately 7,000 submissions, in such a timely manner. As the first country to regulate the sale of cannabis edibles to all adults, it was never in doubt they would place hefty limits on industry and its products. But it's always a delicate task to find balance and accommodate the perspectives of different stakeholders. So there's a look at some of the regulations, and I still can't believe the 10 milligram for an entire package. From Health Canada, edibles becoming legal October 17th, 2019, but likely not going to appear in any store that you frequent. That is, if you can get to a store, not likely to appear at any of those stores until sometime in October 2019, which would be one year from the time that legalization first occurred. From the Cannabis Infused Studio in the Clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Another thing I wanted to chat with you today about was the idea of cannabis now being introduced to our parties in a more open fashion. As many of us have experienced, especially those of us who have a considerable amount of cannabis experience, parties used to go this way. You would be invited to a party somewhere, and if it was a non-cannabis party, everybody would be gathered around a central room or wherever the party action was happening. And at some point in the night, various people would extract themselves from that and say, I'm I'm going outside for a, a cigarette, or I'm going outside for some fresh air, or I'm going outside for something. And off the little sub-party <laughs> would head outside, find a safe destination where one could not be seen and hopefully not be smelled as they 
whipped out a joint or two, and started smoking. That's how parties used to be for the longest time, whether it was a company Christmas party or whether it was a group of friends getting together. There was never that opportunity until legalization occurred for both of those entities, both of those environs, to come together. And this last week, I got to attend a party where they both came together in rather interesting fashion. Now, the interesting part of this party was there were a real diversity of cannabis experience at the party. The party was hosted by, in fact, uh, people that I've spoken about before that I've kind of been guiding down the cannabis path, or at least have been, you know, giving them some opportunity. They were the hosts of the party, and they had invited some, shall we say, long-term cannabis users, as in myself, my wife, and another couple of similar experience. And then in between those two was them, that of course just started after legalization, another group who had just started just after legalization, and one that had been kind of on the periphery, some exposure to cannabis that had not really dove in as deep as they are now. And it was a real interesting dynamic. A good time was had by all, shall we say. Once everybody got settled, the interesting part I found was prior to dinner, nothing came out. Everybody was, you know, either drinking their wine or having their beer, a little bit of imbibing before dinner. And I kept wondering to myself, okay, who's going to be the first one to pull out a joint here? I brought my vaporizer and I know the hosts had a vaporizer as well, but it was going to be curious who was the first one to make any kind of a gesture to, to start smoking some pot. Turns out that it was the other long-term imbiber, the chronic user, as he refers to himself, who was the first to pull out his bag of big, thick joints and decided it was time to light one of those up. At the same time, I pulled out the vaporizer, and at the same time, the host pulled out their vaporizer. And suddenly we have three different <laughs> concoctions being rotated through the party. And, and there was one point where I'm happy to say that I had a vaporizer in each of my hands, and it was a real pleasure to bring both of those to my mouth and take a hit from each of those vaporizers at the same time. And I can't say I've ever done that before, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and it was really, the other part that I found really interesting was who was using the vaporizer and who was using the joints. And they were both flowing fairly freely. It became apparent that those who were new to the cannabis world would take one of those big, thick joints and kind of bring it to their mouth and, and tenderly and gingerly kind of inhale, like they were scared of what that was going to do to them, which I can understand. Often the smoke from a joint can be more harsh, certainly from a vaporizer, than from a vaporizer. So it seemed to be that it was the chronic users, or at least those who had a lot of exposure to cannabis in the past, who were primarily using the joints. The others were primarily using the vaporizers. And they kept going fairly frequently through the night. There was one particular strain which I found really enjoyable. And that was a strain called Shishkaberry. And it pro promoted such great conversation. There were so many laughs after we consumed some of that. It really was a, a great party. We had a good food, good friends, great entertainment. And the cannabis just topped it all off. And as I've said many, many times... I use cannabis as an enhancement to what I'm already doing. And this party would have been fine and had been fine. We have partied with some of those people before. But it was the addition of cannabis in our legalized world that, in my mind, really, truly made that an exceptional night. And it was a lot of fun. I can't wait till the next time we all get together. Are you ready for liftoff? Don't miss Canada's number one cannabis conference and trade show, Lift & Co Expo coming this May 12 to 15 to Metro Toronto Convention Centre. Level up your industry intel at the Lyft Cannabis Business Conference. Connect with movers and shakers from across the cannabis industry and preview new products and services from 250-plus exhibitors. Plus, everyone loves Lyft & Co. Expo's prizes, live music, and more. Visit liftexpo.ca for tickets. That's liftexpo.ca. From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Let's take a look at retail in BC. It's taken a while. This has been <laughs> a real, as I've said before, a glacial approach to retail in the home of BC Bud. And I still have a significant problem just with making that statement 
and realizing we are still so far away from where we should be. So it's a conversation that you hear a lot of details about these days. The fact that it is moving so slowly and, and I can feel for the companies. I mean, there's a, so many companies that have had their retail space reserved, paying rent on that space for months and yet still not able to sell any product through that space. Well, that changed in the Okanagan just this last week. Canada Day, which I thought was very, very appropriate. Congrats to the people at Spirit Leaf for doing that. So Spirit Leaf, which is a national chain, has a stores in a number of different locations. In fact, they have other locations already established. There's one in Castlegar that is Spirit Leaf. And in fact, Castlegar, just as a sidebar, already has three cannabis licenses released. One of those is to Spirit Leaf. But the other one that Spirit Leaf got released from the BC provincial government was a store in Vernon. And on Canada Day, that store opened. If you check out the OkanaganZ.com, I see they were on hand. In fact, David Wiley, my old friend from Okanagan Z, he was the second person to purchase some cannabis from Spirit Leaf when they opened their doors on Canada Day. So congrats to them. Congrats for their ability to finally wait out the provincial government, get their license, and now to be able to sell cannabis to the consumers that have been dying, thirsting, begging for a store to open in the Okanagan with a retail license. And that day has finally arrived. Now, how long will it be until we start to see in some other locations? Okay, it's made it to the Okanagan. Vernon is the first spot. But there's a lot of places in between. And since I mentioned Castlegar has three locations, let me cover off some of the other locations that have multiples already. So Castlegar, the Higher Path, Candleland Cannabis, and Spirit Leaf, the three stores that have been licensed in Castlegar. Dawson Creek has two. Dawson Creek has a license at Starbuds and at Clarity Cannabis. Kimberly, again, we know Kimberly has had two right from the beginning of legalization. To Tamarack Cannabis Boutique and Urso Naturals. We talked to Urso Naturals a few weeks ago. In addition to that, Salmon Arm has two licenses. Green Canoe Cannabis and the Greenery Cannabis Boutique. And that's the only, no, no, I'm sorry, I am wrong because Trail also has two licenses released. There's the Higher Path and then there's Trail Butterbong Shop. Two licenses in a lot of different locations. How about we get on it and get some more of those licenses distributed to the rest of the Okanagan so we can say that every town in the Okanagan has a cannabis store of some form? Now, I have heard further details, the BC Cannabis Stores, where there is only one in Kamloops right now. They have a whole raft of them planned. And I did hear somebody mention that the Penticton store is getting closer to design. They're starting to look to hire their people. So it's getting a little closer, but, but still, frankly, it's a long way off out there bringing cannabis retail to the Okanagan. But we'll see what happens when we finally cross that bridge. <laughs> One other thing that I am dismayed by, and I guess I shouldn't be dismayed by it because it's just a fact of life and we've been living with it. Well, ever since I became a cannabis imbiber, I've been living with this stigma. This idea that if you smoke cannabis, you are a, a, a more criminal person, that you are not an upright citizen. This idea that if you are around a store that sells cannabis, that can't be a good thing. We've got to stuff those stores into the, into the deep, dark places of our city where, where normal people don't go, where normal people won't feel threatened by having the store in the area. I'm getting really tired of it. I mean, October 17, 2018 was when legalization occurred. And okay, I get it, that there is still a significant portion of our population that are still mired in the reefer madness education the idea that if you smoke a joint, that you are going to become this evil, weird, twisted person who can't possibly be a regular member of society. I'm getting damn tired of it. It's, I, I don't find it amusing anymore. We're always giving excuses for, oh, well, you know, that's the way it's been for so long. It'll take everybody a while to get over that. Well, get over it. 
I mean, seriously, get over it. And where is this disparity between alcohol and cannabis and, and how things are? I heard a story this last week where they were talking about, you know, beer gardens, all our summer festivals filled with beer gardens. But because of all the still wacky laws, there's no cannabis gardens at those. Why? Just because of stigma. Just because there's this weird, this weird thought that cannabis is so evil and and it's clearly more evil than alcohol because we can have a whole group of people sitting in an outside patio drinking lots of alcohol in the summertime and lots of fights happen when they get really drunk. But goodness sakes, we wouldn't want to have a, a little area where some cannabis users are smoking a joint or are using their vaporizers if you don't want the smell. The worst thing that's going to happen at that party is they might fight over the the munchies later on at night. <laughs> I am tired of this damn stigma. It's got to stop. We have to, we have to be prepared to get out there and challenge more when that happens. Let's not accept the status quo any longer. Legalization has been happening for over six, seven, eight, nine months now. No, I guess how many? About six, yeah, nine months. In October, November, December, yeah, nine months. It's time we get over this. And people keep telling me, you know, go, Gary, get over it. You know, it's going to take a while. It's going to take years. Well, I'm tired of waiting. We waited since 1972 when the Lindane Commission said that marijuana should be legalized in our country. We finally got it October 17th. We got a weird, weird version of legalization. But as I said to everybody that I talked to on Canada Day, we at least did get legalization. Yes, there's still so much we need to figure out. There's still so much we can do better. There's still so much we can, I don't know, get, get rid of these, these past ideas, these past thoughts that are just so, so outdated. I'm not sure what the steps need to happen. I'm not sure all the things that have to occur for us to accomplish that other than the one thing that I keep saying, we have to be prepared. And by we, I mean... Anybody who smokes cannabis and wants to promote its use in the country as a benefit to their life for all the things that they're doing and get over this damn stigma. I had another one this last week where somebody was purchasing a, a skincare cream, one of our pain creams. They'd used it. They had used it <laughs> with a friend who had offered to let them try it it helped with their condition. I can't remember what their particular condition was, but it helped. So she was coming in to purchase some of that. And then she saw the label. And the label indicated that there were 300 milligrams of CBD and 300 milligrams of THC in this pain cream. And she asked me for the version that didn't have any THC. I informed her that there was no alternate version that the one she had tried, the one that had provided her the pain relief that she had already told me about, that contained THC. And it was, in fact, the mix of the THC and the CBD within that pain cream that provided that medicinal benefit that, that caused that pain to lessen significantly. I mean, pain never really goes away entirely. It's just significantly reduced. And cannabis kind of tricks the brain into... The pain may still be there, but let's think about something else. Let's concentrate our thoughts on anything other than the pain, which gives the impression that that pain has been released. So here again, I saw directly in front of me a stigma. Heard it again. Somebody coming in to look at different, different options, and one of those presented was THC. And just, oh, no, no, I could never do THC. Oh, oh, don't even suggest that to me. CBD, okay. No, 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 THC. There's still such a stigma. And as you've already heard, I'm just tired of it. So let's get over it, people. Help me with this. Promote it in your group. Promote it everywhere you go. If somebody throws out some stupid thing about cannabis that you know is completely bogus and has no version of reality, question them. Push it back. Let them know that no longer are we going to accept these stupid ideas of 
reefer madness. And that's where I still see so much of this coming from. People heard these bad, evil stories about cannabis for so, so long. And they are absolutely convinced that these stories are true. And we need to convince them that those stories were not true. That so much of what they've been told, so much of what they've been fed for so many years has just been wrong. Let's get over it. Let's drop the stigma and let's turn this around so we can have a bit more fun, okay? Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be smoking our cannabis so we can have a little fun. Now, I didn't want to bring you down with all of that discussion about stigma and such, but I also feel that this is an opportunity for me to give some of my thoughts. I need to express my concerns, express my opinion. So thank you for your indulgence with that. Now let's share another little story about a cannabis experience and one that had a bit more fun involved with it, shall we say. This was a Christmas party back when we were in Winnipeg. I worked for a radio station there, probably no surprise since some of the other stuff I've talked about. And this party was being held at, uh, I think, the Winnipeg Winter Club. It was a pretty posh place where the main party was. And, of course, the evening is progressing. And as I mentioned before in my talk about the various parties, you would see little groups of people disappear out for a few minutes and, and off they would come back in. <laughs> well, in this case, it actually got a little carried away because there was initially, I think, four of us that left the party to go smoke a joint in the woods beside the location. And then we had been out there for a while and, and two more people joined us and then two more people joined us. And the next thing we know, we probably had about 25 people from this party <laughs> that were now scattered around this little area in the woods and we were all smoking dope and having a really good time. <laughs> At least we were until somebody who mattered or, or was probably somebody from management who discovered that we were all gone from the party and came walking down the path and was very, very disturbed that we were having another party out here instead of joining in the other party inside. So I think we reluctantly smoked our last joint and went back in and celebrated with the rest of us. But that memory always sticks in my head of being at a Christmas party where it was all elegant and, and everything was happening indoors. And the next thing we know, we're basically having another party and it's a, a whole lot more fun. The conversation was much more vivid and we just had a whole, uh, we just had a blast. <laughs> and, I, and I remember that to this day. So remember that for your next Christmas party. Don't be afraid to start another one because you may in fact have more fun than the first one. And that about wraps it up for what we're going to do here on episode 23 of the Cannabis Podcast. Still looking for people who would like to have some discussion about cannabis, people that would be great to interview. Always you can get a hold of me at info at cannabispodcast.com. And we'll try to line up another cultivar to get back to Cultivar Corner next week. And that about wraps it up for episode 23 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley... This was the Cannabis Podcast.